The ECB last week raised rates from a low of uh, 1%, first time in almost three years. But the decision shows how the EU's monetary policy rarely suits the needs of all 17 member countries. But while the tightening could fight inflation in Germany, it could prove catastrophic to the troubled economies of Spain, Greece, and Ireland, among others. So how should the ECB balance the needs of those various countries? With us now is a man who's often called the father of the euro, Nobel Prize-winning economist Robert Mondale. His work in the 1970s laid the groundwork for the creation of the EU and the common currency. And he's now a Columbia University economics professor. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I thought of you first when I read uh, last week in a Bloomberg story that the ECB has this conundrum. They obviously are setting monetary policy for the entire eurozone, and yet each individual country deals with its own budget uh, and has a different rate of growth. So I was wondering, what did you think or what were you what do you think now um, the ECB should do? Jean-Claude Trichet should deal. How should he deal with this conundrum? Well, I think it's um, um, the need to make a compromise between the two needs. It's true, there's only one monetary policy for the area, but the different needs of the South and the North are different here. And uh, right now, Germany's in quite a strong export boom, and there's a tendency for the central bank inside Frankfurt to take account of that and worry about possible inflation. What they're worried about, particularly, probably, is uh, some effect of uh, high prices in increasing wages. If wages start, then this, the, the Germans would be very worried about this. So well, that's, people, why, though, that's why they act in that way. A lot of people, though, are saying uh, this rate increase is A, too low to fight inflation mm -hmm. in Germany, and B, right. too much for the peripheral countries. Spain, uh, Ireland, Italy to deal with. Well, I think, I think, <laughs> I think it, you know, Trichet must know that there's a big problem between this. Uh, I wish he had not done it. I wish he'd kept it, the rates where they are. But maybe because he has, if he's, he does it the small amount at this time, uh, maybe this will w uh, cool down the fears of those who think that it's a real inflation problem and make it possible so that he doesn't have to keep on increasing the rates. You're right that. A quarter of one percent increase is not going to change anything fundamentally, but he's given a gesture in that direction, and maybe because of that, I hope this is the case, that uh, he won't uh, further follow it up with further increases. I mean, uh, the, a quarter of one percent is not going to uh, make or break uh, Europe. In Professor Mundell, let me important. ask you though: is is the overall strategy of of the European Union flawed here? I mean, how can you have one policy meet the needs of so many member nations? Isn't it always at some point going to be in conflict? Well, no, it's not really so much of a conflict as that because you remember when uh, 10 years ago when Ireland was going at 10 percent and Germany was going at 2 percent, people say, how can you have the same interest rate? Well, you can have the same interest rate. The fact is that the fast-growing country gets more of the money, and that's all, and the slow-growing country doesn't get it. So, it. so it works the way it does in the United States. And you have conflicts in the United States. If oil prices shoot way up, mm -hmm. this, this helps Texas and oil exporting parts of the states, and it hurts the importing parts. So there are always conflicts within big areas, multi-regional areas, and, and they, I, I don't think the conflicts within Europe are any greater than they are within the United States. Well, and one of the things that we see uh, Jean-Claude Trichet doing is uh, using quantitative, his own version of quantitative easing, for example, for the peripheral countries that are in trouble while raising the rates for the main and quick, quicker growing economies. Is that the kind of thing well, that you think, those are the kind of tools that he... Well, it's a sort of slate of hand. <laughs> because the rate moves in one case and the quantity in the other. They both have to really basically move t together. I think that... But he can buy Spanish think, bonds. He can he, buy Portuguese he's, bonds. He's bought, he's, he can do, he's got flexibility to do that because... If he has to expand the money supply, if they increase their balance sheet, uh, they can increase the balance sheet by getting Portuguese or Greek bonds just as well as any other kind of bonds and has the same effect and helps those countries to that extent. So he's making a compromise in that in that sense. Is he, though, risking by raising rates already? We had a guest on last week who thought he made a complete mistake and he'll start having to undo that uh, in the near term future. But is he, Professor Mandel, making possibly a mistake and risking turning some of the sovereign debt nations into a worse situation and into back into a crisis situation? Well, any any 
increase in tightening is going to hurt those sovereign debt nation problems. That's definitely the case. But, however, hurt, but however, hurt versus crisis. The, argu mean. the argument you could make, and I don't know if he's doing this, but the argument you could make uh, is that if he raises rates a little bit now, this gives him some space to be more lenient on other things later on. Mm. Maybe because he's done this, he's given a sop to the uh, the uh, the inflation hater, m haters that in Germany particularly they're pressing down. There's a big Merkel has a big problem with people that that really don't like the union and and uh, so he has to which do you something can there. Which you can understand, right? The Germans yes. are so hawkish. They're <clears throat> so terrified yeah. of inflation because of their yeah. experiences. And why mm -hmm. should they be paying for the early retirements of people in Greece and Portugal? Well, th th that's uh, that was a big mistake that was made in Greece and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and a big mistake that was made in the rest of Europe that didn't put their foot down at a much earlier time. So, But that's all past now. The fact is that uh, there's enough resources now. The fact that, that German growth is very strong is a plus, not a minus, for the community as a whole. It means there are more resources available, and uh, they're not all going to go to Germany. Some of them will have to be divided up for, for this emergency. Does it show you, in terms of getting through the crisis, getting through the last year or so, in terms of dealing with the sovereign debt situation, that the EU, the European Union is actually working and working actually really well. I think it's incredible that if it can solve this problem, it can solve any problem. I think I think it's they have to muddle through. It's what the British are always say they have to do with problems like that, and they have to muddle through. Keep and a make stiff a, upper and lip. They, in the process, they have to also they have to make a, make a move toward a little more centralization of fiscal policy. Do you have any doubt about the success of the European Union continuing? I have no doubt. No, no doubt about it. It'll continue. It's good because there's no other game for those countries in Europe. There's no other. There's no alternative to them. Every, no going everything back else. There's, like no going, there's no backup. There's no back. Anything else is much, much worse for them. All right, hey, Professor Mondell, we appreciate you joining us. Thank Thanks you. so much.